Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. I was uh, I was 11 years old. My dad had just bought a a new Ford Econoline van. I think it was a uh, I think the year the, well the year must have been uh, 1967. I think the van that he bought was uh, was almost new, and uh, my mom she uh, we were going to a uh, a Pentecostal church at the time, and my mom she jokingly referred to it as our tribulation van. You know because it had a little sink and it had a little ice box and and you know. And uh, us kids, well, we'd ride in the back of it. We'd take short trips in it. This was 1967. This was the, the year of the Six-Day War. Maybe that had something to do with my mom's thinking concerning that. This was the war that was fought between Israel and, and its uh, Arab neighbors, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, uh, even the nations of Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Algeria, and, and others, they also contributed troops and, and arms to the Arab forces. And for some reason, in 1967, my mom thought that we were uh, going to go through the tribulation period. She believed that until, uh, until her death. I could never, it seemed, you know, convince my family that that was not true, that the church would be raptured and that we wouldn't go through the tribulation period. But I do remember this very distinctly. It stands out in my memory and, and you know, amongst my childhood memories. And the reason I mention this is because it was very short lived, this. Uh, this idea that the Lord was going to come back in 1967, it was just sort of a uh, passing, you know, idea that, that didn't last. It wasn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't continue. Uh, in the world of 1967, there was there was nothing really on a broader scale that, that led Christians to believe at that time that the Lord was coming back. Certainly they, people weren't talking about it. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't read much about it. You didn't hear much about it. Uh, this idea of an apocalyptic uh, you know, future you know, didn't exist. Life went on. It was forgot about, quickly forgot about. I'm 11 years old, uh, and here I stand today talking to you, precious souls. And I believe that I can easily document at least 40 uh, things concerning last day's prophecy that your great grandparents, and in, in many cases, your, your grandparents never heard about much less thought about in the world that they lived in. I want to talk about some of those. Some of these may overlap. And they're, please note that, that they are not necessarily in, in order. Uh, I tried to some extent to categorize these, but I'm, I'm going to begin with the idea here in the year 2020, the year of our Lord 2024, I'm going to begin with the idea that, that one of the, the greatest indications, I think, of our Lord's near return is the years. has to do with the years. 6,000 years, uh, 2,000 years, uh, 70, 80 years. Uh, the numbers seem to indicate that we have arrived at the point of uh, disembarkment. 
or what or what we as Christians refer to as the harpazo or the rapture, the removal of the church, our departure uh, from this world, which ushers in the tribulation period and our return with Christ at the end of that seven years. I've made a number of videos over the past seven years uh, concerning how I believe that that uh, all of this is working out. Uh, I've suggested on more than one occasion that I believe that the wheels of prophecy turn slowly. We are seeing things in our lifetime that our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents uh, never even could have, I don't, I don't think they could have imagined. Uh, number two on my list is giving God the boot. And I'm not talking about just America and God judging America, you know, because it's kicked God out of schools and out of our institutions and, and our politics, our government, and so on and so forth. And, uh, but I believe on a global scale, we've basically given God the boot. We've said, we don't need you in our lives. We can manage things quite nicely on our own. So that's number two. I do not believe that our the previous generations, the generations that preceded us, saw what we're seeing in that, in that area on, on such a scale as what we're seeing it today. Number three on my list is the decline in church attendance. This has been well, this is well documented. We the churches people are just flat out losing interest. All right, in the established religious system, uh, which we know as we refer to as Christianity today, a definite decline and a sharp decline the past several years in church attendance. I believe, and this is number four on my list, I believe that we are living in the age of apostasy where we have, as a, as a whole, the church, as far as the institution, the organization is concerned, it has departed from the faith. And I'm talking about the faith that was once delivered unto us, the saints, which is amounts basically amounts to our a relationship with God based upon the relationship that, uh, that, that's, that was established in this present dispensation, which is the age of in the age of grace, which is a relationship with God by faith, the righteousness that comes through faith, the gospel of of the gospel for the church that's based upon the faithfulness of Christ, not our own faithfulness, our walk with Him in accordance with truth, there has been a great falling away, a great departure from the faith. I've mentioned how that, you know, if we were born 300 years prior to today, uh, it would be a whole different world. Uh, I'm talking about the Christian world. The theology would, would mostly be in the uh, scene, looked at through the 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 filter of, of what Christ had done for us, not what we must do for Christ. And, and we've departed from that. Number five on my list, and I, and I understand some of these may overlap, but religion, uh, idol worship, this is what the departure from the faith leads to. It's, uh, we, live, we are surrounded by, a, uh, we live within a world religious system that is primarily based on human merit. And idols, idol worship, that can be anything that takes the place of God, but I think primarily today the idol is ourselves, the creature rather than the creator. Uh, we worship the creature rather than the creator. The number of false prophets uh, has, has increased. Now many of those signs that you read in Matthew 24 which we know because of the context refer to the tribulation period. There was no, no church in existence in Matthew 24. Uh, that's going to change. The church will be removed in Matthew 24. will once again be 
in context, it, we are beginning to see some of those signs that Jesus referred to that would occur during the tribulation period. And I believe that's, that's quite natural since we are almost bordering, you know, our departure is so near and we're, we're just sitting along the border of the tribulation period. Uh, the number of denominations today is staggering. Didn't used to be that many. Now you've got a church on every street corner that, you know, it's, uh, uh, there's not a whole lot that I can say about that except, except for the fact that, that every time a church fractures, a fellowship is, uh, becomes uh, a matter, it becomes disunified. You know, if someone wants to start a new church because they disagreed with, you know, what their former church believed, or it it splinters, it fractions. Then, then now you have a, a new denominations with lovely new names that that seem to be fresh and and new and and everything. And it's, it's really not. There is a unity that exists among believers, and that is. And that unity exists in the fact that we are all united, one body in Christ. Uh, this is a, a touchy subject, I, I understand, but there is a one uh, faction of Christianity, the charismatic movement. Uh, if you're associated with it, uh, my apologies uh, to you. Uh, I don't have much good to say about it. It is fleshly. It's legalistic. It's law-oriented. It, it, uh, the charismatic movement in Christianity is a movement within the established or mainstream Christian denominations. Uh, it, uh, it, it adopts certain beliefs and practices uh, that are more in line with law, not grace. It's... Uh, with an emphasis on the baptism uh, of the Holy Spirit, a second baptism, although Scripture says one faith, one spirit, one baptism. The use of spiritual gifts, which is where it basically gets its name, charismata. It's affected most denominations in the U.S. It's spread widely across the world. It's uh, thought to have begun in 1960 in uh, Anglicanism. It's, it's spread to other mainstream Protestant denominations. Uh, by 1962, uh, Presbyterians uh, became uh, subject to the error. Uh, Methodists became involved in it in the 70s. The movement was, was not initially influential in evangelical churches. That changed in the 80s in what they call the third wave uh, the vineyard movement. Uh, it's basically centered within the, the realm of Pentecostal churches. Uh, many traditional evangelical churches remain opposed to that movement. And they teach a cessationist theology, cessation uh, theology. That's the theological position that that believes that spiritual gifts no longer remain available to the church since their operation ceased with the apostolic age of the church or soon thereafter, which is the position of this ministry. I'm going to say as number nine, doctrine. O Timothy, give heed unto doctrine, for in doing so thou shalt deliver thyself and them that hear thee. Doctrine is not a popular word today within mainstream Christian circles. It is thought to divide when in fact uh, that's its purpose. Strangely, that's its purpose. Uh, Steve, list, list, you know, you can speak, but just don't, don't, don't get too heavy into doctrine because that doctrine divides. Uh, you can see how some of these overlap, you know, apostasy, doctrine. But I'm gonna I'm gonna 
list that as number nine. Number 10 would be Israel becoming a nation again in 1948. Little needs said about that. Uh, several thousand years. And we come to the point of Israel's rebirth, which was in many cases, most scholars would agree, it was a necessary fulfillment for Christ to return. This occurred, it occurred before I entered into this world in 1956. So I was born into it, perhaps you were too. And then as a, number 11, I'm going to list weapons of mass destruction because they didn't exist before 1945, at least not to my knowledge. We have the ability to blow ourselves to kingdom come. Very unique generation or age to live in, and considering the fact that most Homo sapiens, most uh, humans, never could imagine anything such as that. And I think we were sort of indoctrinated to that. We've just accepted that. It just seems to be part of the norm. Why? Why would it be? <laughs> I mean, we, we live under the umbrella of nuclear annihilation. Most of our ancestors did not. And yet we don't want to, for some reason, strange odd reason, we don't want to even list, put that down on our list as one of the indicators that Christ may be returning soon. Doesn't make sense to me. And then there's the United Nations. You know, there was a League of Nations, now there's a United Nations, there's, there's a, which leads me to number 13 on my list, globalism. We all, most of us, I guess, are familiar with the, the, the Tower of Babel. And then travel. You know, you can get from one place to another pretty quickly. Now, it's not like the old days, horse and buggy and, you know, or just horseback or... Or, or hiking, walking, you know, which most of our ancestors, that's how, the, that's the only way that they had to travel. A lot of these that I'm going to give you are, are really somehow, I mean, they're interconnected, but, but I'm, I have to list travel. Uh, and I'm primarily speaking of travel here on terra firma earth but then there's space travel and that's also i think significant we have ventured off this planet into space and we don't typically look at that well that you know the, i guess the the typical way to look at that is well man is evolving he's progressing you know isn't it wonderful we're exploring space and uh, i think the serious christian has to look at that in a different sense altogether. I don't think it was, uh, pardon me for saying so, I don't want to offend any of you uh, die-hard astronomers, but, or, you know, future space explorers, but look, I don't think we were intended to, you know, leave this planet. I think we were put here for a purpose, and, and everything else that we see out there is dead. We live in a in a universe with, you know, all of creation was subject to the fall. Well, I mean, what is it that we expect to find? Um, I think the whole purpose is to disprove the existence of God. This, the same is true with archaeology, which also falls near the end of my list. I don't have much time to talk about each one of these uh, in a video for time's sake, but, you know, uh, Number 16, space Im imagery. That's another thing. It's, it's God, but God intended that we actually get a glimpse of His glory in a way that we've never seen before. And I think that we have to include that. Think of that also as, as an indicator that we are nearing the end of the age. Space discoveries, that's on my list too. Number 17. And we get to number 18 sexual revolution, and that covers a large segment. 
Or, or there's so many different avenues, branches, offshoots concerning that subject. When we talk about a se sexual revolution, we're talking about everything that has anything to do with with uh, that that whole idea that what what the Bible calls sexual sin, and it just covers so many areas. I, I don't even have time to get in, into that. We know our our parents, grandparents. You can argue all day long, okay, that there was sexual immorality in the desert, in the wilderness, when Israel, you know, God was dealing with Israel in the wilderness for 40 years. That's true. Uh, you can even go all the way back to Noah. You know, the, 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 the sexual immorality that occurred during Noah's time. There's a difference in what's happening today. Uh, it is unprecedented. 19 on my list is something kind of odd. It's, it's just our dress, our attire, you know, what we wear. Uh, many of our parents, uh, uh, grandparents, would, have, would be appalled at how j d the, uh, the dress has changed. Uh, what, what is accepted is norm as the norm today would have been thought of as absolute, you know, an absolute abomination you, just not too many years ago. But this is what happens, is we, we slip into these areas and, and, it, and it just becomes the norm. We become comfortable with it and to the point to where that it's just generally accepted and we don't see anything wrong with it. There's a... Uh, and I hope not to offend many of my sisters in Christ here, but uh, I have to bring up the, the subject of feminism, the women abandoning their proper place in, 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 all, in, in this whole program of God's redemption for mankind. He created man for, for a reason, and woman for a reason. They each have their unique, distinct responsibilities and obligations. I think men have left theirs, women have left theirs, it's not, so I, I don't want, really want to beat up too much on the women here, uh, but I have to list that. Uh, you could also throw into that equation, you know, the, the, uh, the lack of uh, masculinity today. And then there's abortion. And you can see how many of these overlap. We're, we're killing our unborn. Now, without going into great detail, uh, I would just suggest to all of you that all of you read uh, the, uh, some of the greatest works that's ever been written on that by uh, C. Everett Koop, which was a former Surgeon General, and, and Francis Schaeffer, Whatever Happened to the Human Race. You can probably buy that book online. That'll kind of set your mind straight on where we're, we're at concerning that. Uh, it's evil, it's pure evil, it's demonic, you know, this is what our ans many of our furthest ancestors, you know, did by, you know, sacrificing their own children by throwing them into a volcano to appease some angry God. And then there's economics in general, you know, uh, just the debt that this world has accumulated, and I'm not talking about just the United States, national debt, I'm talking about on a global scale. Uh, and then there's prepping. You know, I never knew one prepper when I was young, growing up, you know, I, I was raised around old missile silos, Minuteman Minute missile silos. We, me and my brothers, we used to play in them when I was a kid. Nowadays, you know, they're, they, They've been bought, the, the land's been purchased uh, privately. They, many of them have been converted into underground, you know, fallout shelters, nuclear bomb shelters. Uh, but we never heard about any, you know, we never thought about that when I was younger. Prepping, you know, it's, it's 
I'm not a prepper. You know, I'm a, I guess I, I'm what you'd call a realist. I mean, I, I keep on hand what I think I may need in case of an emergency, but I'm not all just immersed in the whole idea of prepping. I don't think it's, 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 it's wholly Christian uh, because we're told not to worry about what we're gonna, what, what we're gonna need, that the, our Lord will supply our needs. And then there's uh, wars, rumors of wars. You know, Matthew 24, 6, that's the context of the tribulation period. I understand that. But uh, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're already doing that. Uh, now, I want to, I want to, I want to, just as a side note, I want to talk about something here on that. Uh, if you turn to your, to your Bibles in Romans 10, 17, you'll read, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word is uh, a, a kue. It's hearing. It's the sense of hearing. It's, uh, it is, uh, its usage is, uh, is hearing, faculty of hearing, uh, reporting, uh, even rumor. And this is why we see this same word, hearing, in Matthew 24, 6, rumors of wars. It's wars and hearing of wars. Same word. Except the hearing here is very specific. The hearing is, it, it's used of an inner spiritual hearing that goes with receiving faith from God. Uh, that is spiritual hearing. It's discerning God's voice. So it's... Wars, it's talking about wars and rumors, that is hearing, hearing on a spiritual level, you know, discerning God's voice, a hearing of wars. Just thought you might find that interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, you now as number 25, climate, uh, it's changed. I, I can tell you, I've lived in, in Oklahoma most of my life and I've never seen anything like the changes in the weather that's taking place. Uh, I believe that there are, uh, well I know that the, the earth and, and, the, and in fact the entire universe is groaning in expectation of our deliverance, of its own deliverance as well as ours. And this is what our word says, the word of God says. I don't fully buy, buy into the, the whole climate change idea. Like, you know, it's, it's some existential threat to humanity. Uh, this world is not, nothing's going to happen to this planet until God determines that it do. But I think climate is a big part of this. I know knowledge, the knowledge explosion is, the technology in general Think about it, folks. Just for for thousands of years, and then finally we come to a point in which we are a generation in which ex has somehow come to advance, progress, experience uh, uh, an explosion and advancement in technology that our ancestors could never have imagined. And we don't want to look at that as a sign that the end is near. But, you know, rather, what we tend to do is we do the opposite. We look at it as, well, man's evolving, man's progressing. I don't think that's the case at all. I do believe that God gave us the Internet for, as, as far as us, our, God's children, to use in these final days to reach out to others with the, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 27 on my list is communications. I mean, you know, instant. Again, our ancestors could not have, our previous ancestors, our even relatives, uh, closest relatives, could not never have imagined these types of communications or internet, which is number 28 on my list. Uh, E-commerce, which is 29 on my list, and I think e-commerce factors into this in a big way. Many of you also do too. Uh, 
as far as far as number 30 on my list uh, artificial intelligence AI I think that also many of you can imagine how that that factors into this 31 on my list is genetic research uh, 32 on my list is the education uh, the institutions of education today that are corrupt in many cases uh, it's more like programming indoctrination than it is true education and that includes Bible colleges and universities. It's, uh, I went through this, you know, where that I was graded not on my insight into what I believe was the truth of the Word of God, but it was, you know, about the only time I ever got a passing grade was, was if, was as long, I got that passing grade as long as I was sort of in line with the, what the university taught. Uh, if I ever stepped out of line with that, uh, it affected my grade. So I have that as number 32. Number 33 would be ethics. I'm just gonna say ethics, you could say morals. Uh, it's, it's, it, basically I look at it as the good old days versus the present. If you've, I, I could give a number of examples, but I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about. Times have changed. Uh, I know that the, the phrase good old days can, you can look at it as a relative term. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, my great great grandfather had his good old days. <laughs> my, my children, children's children would have their good old days. Folks, we cannot, we cannot keep concealing from our own selves all of these things for very long before we come to the point of, of realizing that, that what we're doing is we're just normalizing everything. What is taking place today is not normal by any, in it, by any stretch of the imagination, unless you're one of those who, in which God doesn't factor into any of this. Number 34 on my list is lawlessness. Now you can argue, well, it's, Steve, there's always been some degree of lawlessness, and that's true. That's true. I've never seen it like, and I'm sure many of you as well, have never seen it like the lawlessness in your lifetime that ever that presently exists. Number 35 on my list is anti-Semitism. A sharp rise, over 300%, just in the past several years. The hatred for Israel. Uh, this is going to reach a climax. Uh, when you have t when you have two vehicles that are coming head on and there's about to be a collision and and there's no avoiding it, this is going to work itself out. But it's going to work itself out in in the way I believe that God intended. We know that no matter how great that anti-Semitism is, God is in control and He's looking over over watching over and protecting his people. Number 36 on my list is love waxing cold from the just normal friendships in the workplace, on the street, to family members, to the broader scope of you know communities and, and uh, governments, uh, nations. This is one of the primary indicators of the latter days in the tribulation period, but we are already seeing it. I want you to think hard about just what I put as 30 on, number 37 on my list. It's end times mania, all right? Last days mania. Now look, we, we are either, all of us, we, so many, I mean, and I'm talking hundreds of thousands, if not more, uh, if not millions around the world. We're either, it's either a mass delusion that's occurring 
or the Lord's coming back soon. Never have we ever, has there ever been a time, I don't, I don't believe in human history, in which there's, there's been so many people thinking that we are living in the latter days. And that reflects itself in number 38 on my list, the cin cinema. You see it in apocalyptic movies. You see it on, on TV. You see it in so many ways through cinema. And 39 on my list, music. You see it in, even in the lyrics, even in music. Number 40 on my list is the UFO, UAP phenomenon. I've shared my views on that. I believe that's also, and, and it's, it's interesting how that all that really sort of re, resurfaced. Not that our ans, it's not that our ancestors didn't have any association or thought about that, but it's resurfaced just since Israel became a nation again, or right after the development of the atomic bomb. 41, I'll go past 40. I'll say archaeological discoveries. You know, uh, we used to wonder, you know, where, the, where, where Noah's Ark was. I think we found it now. I think, you know, we often wondered about, you know, all the, the other things, uh, such as the Ark of the Covenant. And, uh, I know they recently, just, you know, not too, too long ago, they, they discovered art of... Uh, what you call artifacts, I guess. They've discovered a, a great number of artifacts that, you know, Dead Sea Scrolls for one, uh, chariot wheels at the bottom of the Red Sea. As number 42, I'm gonna say celestial signs. Celestial signs, signs in the heavens, signs on earth. There's, we God has shown us, I believe, signs in the heavens, sign on signs on earth, signs in our own nation, our country, in our world, uh, signs in our own communities, signs in our own relationships with one another, signs internally within our own selves. I think God has made it absolutely crystal clear that we are, in fact, the final generation that precedes the Lord's return. And I, I guess you could just add one more. That's, I, I, I've, got, I've reached 42. You could just say add one more to that, 43. Add one more just because I can list this many. Now, 43 is a lot, folks. We're not talking about five, six, seven, eight, you know. It's a lot. Just something for you to think about, to keep looking up. Don't give up. Keep looking up. Our Lord is, is coming back soon for His own. And if you don't know Him, I invite you to join us in our studies through Galatians on Sunday, if you've never heard the true gospel, I invite you to come and listen on this channel. You'll hear the good news of Jesus Christ. It may sound a little different than the, the gospel that you normally hear in the world around you. But the emphasis is on Christ, not ourselves. The emphasis is on grace, not law. I want to say, as in closing, I love you all. I truly do. I pray for you constantly. I've, I've received some, a few emails here recently asking for my prayer for them. And I want you to know that you are always in my prayers, all of you. If I've ever talked to you, if I've ever messaged you, you're always in my prayers. I think about you constantly. I ask for your prayers as well. Pray for the direction of this ministry. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.